I'm in a hotel this weekend right before course. I just picked this up off the front porch before I drove down here to teach this course. Uh, ordered a new electroacupuncture device from Amazon. So let's open it up and see what it looks like and then figure out how to set it up. So there's the instruction manual, multi-purpose health device instruction manual uh, with a lot of Chinese writing on it. Manufactured by Great Wall. Upside down. Ah, uh, there's a familiar face. We got all the electrodes and we have the power cable. Even though you searched electroacupuncture in Amazon and, and this is what you came up with, this is nothing more fancy than a tabletop TENS unit. So just like a transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulator, uh, just like a handheld TENS unit. It looks scary. There's a, there's a lot of dials. There's a lot of buttons. Uh, but at the end of the day, all this is is a electrostimulation device that you can hook to an acupuncture needle if you're an acupuncturist performing acupuncture. Or you can use the alligator clips to hook to a dry needling needle if you're a clinician performing dry needling and you want to perform electrical dry needling. Because again, all this is is a TENS unit. Let's look at this bag and see what all we have. So we have a uh, channel stimulator with alligator clips, another channel stimulator with alligator clips, and then a, another channel stimulator with alligator clips, another one, and one more. You should have one, two, three, four, five, six. You should have six alligator clip uh, leads. So there'd be two alligator clips on each channel stimulator. So that would give you the opportunity to stimulate a total of 12 needles. Now the thing about these alligator clips is they're not my favorite alligator clip. They're, uh, you'll, you'll feel them if you buy one. They're uh, just not as strong as some other alligator clips that I've worked with over the years. Also there's a pretty big gap in, in the middle of the alligator clip. So it's possible that when you go to clip the needle, if you don't clip it right on the teeth, then you'll put it down here in this gap and it won't even make contact with the needle. And then, uh, you know, you'll be turning up your intensity and all of a sudden there's, there's nothing going on. And then, then all of a sudden it zaps them because the needle touched the stimulation uh, and got some electricity. So if you use this machine with these particular alligator clips, uh, that's a reason why I do like a thicker handled needle, like the Myotech 2.0 has a real thick handle. You can clip this alligator clip on the handle and the handle is so thick that it will always have contact with the, uh, with the needle making sure you get good consistent electrical stimulation so to hook these up obviously nothing nothing too complicated uh, you just put the male end into the female end and you would do that all six times and the reason that they're different colors is so you don't get confused so when you hook up your two needles to this channel you can go turn on intensity and you see oh those two needles are hooked up to purple so let me turn on purple you would just repeat that for all six of these. Now that we've got the electrical stimulation leads hooked up to the uh, device, this I've, I've ordered so many of these things over the years. Uh, this is the first time that I've ever had only five electrical stimulation leads that came in the package. Normally there's six electrical stimulation leads that have uh, two alligator clips on each lead. <clears throat> this did not come with it though. What else was in the package was uh, this little guy. This is an AccuPoint detector. So as a physical therapist, I'm not doing acupuncture, so I would never use that. That goes in here, and this is a, uh, again, it's an acupoint detector, uh, but I, I don't know anything about that because I'm not an acupuncture. So this is a device, this part of the device, this dial and this thing are nothing that I ever use in clinic. So I'll just put that to the side. My six electrical stimulation lead that they sent uh, is just like a regular TENS lead. And then it came with TENS pads as well. Now, the previous ones that I've ordered would have six of these, and then it would have this, so this would be the seventh. This is the first time I've ordered one of these devices, and it only had five leads, and then this was the six. But this is just a regular old TENS, <laughs> TENS unit lead. So just like, uh, just like we use in the clinic all day, and this is just a TENS pad with a little, little stickies, just like a TENS pad. So I'll set those aside for now. And in the box, it also came with a half inch micropore tape, which is handy to be able to tape alligator clip leads down. Uh, when you have a needle that's not in very far, you can, you can tape the alligator clip to the skin close to the needle and that'll keep the needle from falling out. And then this is just another form of being able to 
put this lead into this device, but I've never quite seen a device like that, so I'm not entirely sure what that is. And the scope of this video is how to use this for dry needling. So once again, I'll just set that to the side, something else that I will never use. Now that we have our electrical stimulation lead set up, we'll look at go ahead and uh, getting the power hooked up to this to get it turned on. So here is the power supply. So we'll just take our power supply and plug that in. And then thanks to the Hilton Guardian, I can plug this in directly in, in front of me here. There's also, and there's my Chinese music. I'll tell you about that in a second. There's also a battery pack. So you can use six, it looks like C batteries. Uh, so if you don't have power, you could also use this as just a battery operated TENS device with six C batteries. So that's handy that you can use, uh, you can use both like that. So let's get a layout of some of these buttons. So let's start with the, uh, the top left. So APD, of course that's, that's written in Chinese, so I can't read that. Uh, this stands for acupoint detector. So I do not practice acupuncture. I am not an acupuncturist. So this part of the machine is completely dead to me. I will never use that. I won't hook up the detection outlet and I'll never twist this around. So don't let this confuse you with setting the time because this is the acupoint detector. In the middle is the power button. Uh, <laughs> if the power button comes on and you don't have the timer set, you will get Chinese music, which is what happened when I plugged it in. The power button was turned on and shipping. So if the power button is on and then there is no, uh, there is no timer set, you're going to get this little musical, uh, this little musical medley. Here is your timer. So it's a, it's really, it's just like a kitchen timer. You'll twist it and you'll hear it clicking, click, 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 click. Now, if your timer is set, and you turn the machine on, you should not get any music. You shouldn't get a melody. If the timer is set, you turn this on, and you hear music, then most likely you have left an intensity lead on. So timer set, I go to turn on my power. Wait a minute, why am I getting music? The timer sets, the power's on, why do I have music? I go down and look, and I see, oh wait, I had one of my frequencies left on. So that's one of the things that frequently confuses people when they buy this machine. I'll get an email literally saying, that, all I'm hearing is music. I can't get the freaking music off. <laughs> and the timer's set and I still hear music. It just means that they left one of their leads on. And it's real common, like you're, you're treating a patient and this thing dials down and then you get the music and you go in there to, to remove all the needles and cut off the treatment. Sometimes you may just kill the power before you twist off the e-stem leads. Uh, and then you go to turn it back on and then all of a sudden, you left your e stem lead on, so you would, you would turn that back down. So other parts of this uh, device, so this dial, this kind of the middle left dial is frequency, and it is frequency for waveform one. So if you can see it says freak one. So this will control the frequency for your first waveform. Speaking of waveforms, these are your waveforms. You have wave one, two, three, four, five. You press them down, let me get it on, and then I press it down and you can see the waveform that it produces. If I press channel two, or waveform two, you see the waveform it produces, three, the waveform it produces, four, the waveform it produces, and then five, the waveform it produces. You can look at your manual. The first part of the manual is, is all written in Chinese, but the back half of the manual has been translated into English. It's not an easy read, just to be completely honest with you. But what you can see is you can see the waveforms, so the, the properties of the product. So the first waveform is what they consider the basic waveform. So if you press channel or waveform one, you have it depressed, then you'll get the first waveform. The second waveform is a continuous waveform. And you can hear it, it says tap, 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 tap. And you would feel that through the needle. The third waveform is a compressional wave. The fourth waveform is a discontinuous wave. The fifth waveform is a fluctuational wave, is what they call that. So you can go in and you can read all about the different waveforms and you can hook yourself up to two different needles and hook up the alligator clips and then try the waveforms on yourself so you can kind of see what they feel like. And then the last one, the six, is the uh, start-stop waves. You'd have to 
read about that and, and how it describes that. Generally, in my physical therapy practice, I use the first, just a form of continuous waveform, and the frequency, which again, frequency one controls this first waveform. So if I want this wave, you can hear it click, 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 click. If I want that to be faster, I will speed up the frequency. Click, 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 click. And now it's like a tetanus type contraction. Generally, for uh, the wave frequency I use to get above motor, I wanna increase my intensity enough to get above motor threshold. So I wanna create just a little bit of movement within the muscle when I'm doing intramuscular dry needling. I keep this around four. All these machines are a little bit different though. So you kind of have to, some, some of your four may be more like a six, some of your fours may be a little bit of a two, because again, this is only a hundred dollar machine, but I just want a consistent, nice contraction. So in my physical therapy practice, generally I only mess with this frequency because I'm only using this waveform. Now, over here, you have another frequency dial. It says frequency two through five. So this frequency dial changes the speed. Remember frequency is, is the speed, changes the frequency for waveforms two through five. So if I'm on waveform two, and you can hear it, it'll and then it'll tap, tap, tap. There's a tap, tap, tap. If I want that to be faster, I can turn up the frequency. Now it's tap, 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 tap. And so again, this changes frequencies two through five. So if you use, I'm sorry, it changes waveforms two through five. So if you use two through five, this is where you would change the speed of waveforms two through five. But generally, in my practice, I use waveform one, and so this frequency controls waveform one. And then now, it's just as simple as turning on the intensities. These are all intensity dials. Turn on the intensities, just like you would for any type of electrical stimulation that you intimately know how to do in your clinical practice. So you have a positive and a negative. So you have two leads, just like you would with a regular TENS unit. You have a a black and a red, these are covered with green and red, but it's still the same thing. You have a positive and a negative. And so you would hook this up to two needles. And if I wanted to turn on this channel, if I wanted to turn on the purple channel, I would go look and say, okay, purple is right here. So I'm gonna turn on the intensity for the purple channel. There's a little bit of play in the little dials before you'll feel it, feel it click. So I'll feel it click. And then I can start slowly turning up the intensity until I get the patient two things. Either I get the needle moving above motor threshold so I see their muscle just contracting just a little bit to the speed of my, or to the frequency of my output. Or if they say, all right, dude, that's enough, then that's enough. So it's, it's always patient tolerance. We try to get above motor threshold if we can, but if we can't get them above, above motor threshold, we just use patient tolerance. And then I would just turn this up to their patient tolerance or above motor threshold. And then I would set my next lead. So I would turn that one on and then however many needles I had, I had done. And just remember, there is a little bit of play in these dials. So that's probably a, that's almost a centimeter of play in this dial before it ever clicks on. And you'll feel it click on, and then you start turning up your intensity. Pretty, after you kind of know the ends and, you know, kind of some of the nuances about it, I think the biggest nuance about this machine is the, uh, if you don't have a timer set and you turn it on, you're gonna get music. They play different tunes. Uh, they all just kind of play a different song. Uh, the Great Wall has been this, uh, that song. Previous machines have been more of a oriental type music. Uh, but again, if you, if you turn on the power without having the timer set, you're gonna get music and it's not gonna work. So you're like, okay, let me set my timer. So I set my timer. And then if you turn on the power, and you still get music, you probably left one of your intensity dials on. So you would want to turn that off. So when you turn this on, set your time, turn it on, you should not get any music. If you're on waveform one, you change your frequency with that, hook up the patient with the alligator clips, and then you turn up your frequency to a little bit above motor threshold if they can tolerate it or, tolerate it or just to patient tolerance. 
and then you would run it for however long you set your time for, 10 or 15 minutes. So you've already seen me a time or two in this video do this, which is pulling my time down because that little ticking of the kitchen timer drives me crazy. That's not a good idea. <laughs> These have little plastic gears. If you do this 10 times a day, changing your time and twisting it down, you're eventually gonna strip the little plastic gears in this timer, and then your machine's not gonna work anymore. It'll be a complete throwaway machine. So let your timer run down naturally. Resist the urge to twist it down and, and make it go off. So don't do that. <laughs> or you can twist this over to on and then it'll just stay on. And then you would have to set a timer a different way because it's not gonna it's not gonna tick down. So you saw me, I twisted it all the way around thinking that it would go all the way to here, but it was a twist back this way to go to on. Overall, this is a very solid device for less than $100, which is crazy because you can spend $1,000 on, on an electrical dry needling machine. And at the end of the day, I mean, obviously the thousand dollar machine is better, but at the end of the day, they both do the same stuff. They're just, they're basically just tabletop tens units and you're using alligator clips to hook them up to uh, needles as opposed to doing pads. So this little hundred dollar machine, uh, I mean, my gosh, you can buy 10 of these for what you can buy a, uh, for the thousand dollar stimulator. So you can have one of these in every clinical room that you have. And you may kind of wonder, well, I mean, yeah, I'm paying a hundred dollars, so it's, it must be a cheap piece of crap. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's built pretty solid and, uh, an interesting thing. I have worked a uh, hospital based outpatient ortho for the past uh, 13 years. Uh, I'm not working there right now, but, uh, in a hospital, you have, uh, a lot of testing you have to do on medical equipment before you can use it on a patient. So we have a full biomedical engineering department and even these little hundred dollar machines that we would get off of Amazon, uh, the biomedical engineering department would test them. They would uh, run them through all their checks and then they would put their little stamp of approval on the back of them. And that's a, that's an internal mechanism through the uh, hospital-based system that I worked for. But y'all know you also, in a, in a physical therapy clinic, you usually hire that third-party person, that third-party company that comes around and tests all your equipment. So we would have the internal biomedical engineers test all our equipment. And then every year we would have that independent third-party company come into the clinic and they test all of our equipment as well. And then, so they would always test these machines as well. And I remember the first time the guy tested it, uh, he was, he's like, I've never seen one of those. He was so, he was so anxious to kind of hook it up and see what it was doing. And when he hooked it up to his computer and hooked it up to his, uh, his little waveform thing that he would look to make sure all the electrical stimulations would work, he was like, this is just a TENS unit. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it is just a TENS unit. It's just a tabletop one. We hook it up with needles. We hook up with needles. Uh, so every year, these little $100 great wall machines that we would get off Amazon would get approved by our biomedical department, and they would get approved by that third-party uh, compliance company that comes in and tests all of your medical equipment. So that gave me a lot of confidence in this little $100 machine. If I could use it in the hospital on patients, uh, in a physical therapy clinic, and then both of those uh, both of those agencies, our internal service and the third-party company, both approved it. So that gave me a little more confidence. Uh, so my only gripe with this, ele this uh, electrical stimulation device is these alligator clips. Several years ago when we would buy these, the alligator clips were better. They, they were all covered in plastic and the, the clips were really strong. Uh, these are not super strong, uh, so that's my only that's my only downfall here. And they have that big gap in between them, so you really it behooves you to kind of clip the handle as opposed to clipping the needle. But y'all, for a hundred bucks, you just can't beat this.